Walter Mitty dreams of adventure, while Ben Stiller dreams of Oscar. You're watching Beyond the Trailer's review of The Secret Life of Walter Mitty. If you want something done right, you have to do it yourself. Ben Stiller, the son of comedians Jerry Stiller and Ann Mira, grew up in the business and was eager to establish his own foothold. But his parents weren't superstars, and even though they did have connections, Stiller had to prove he was serious about his craft and not just another product of nepotism. Then again, Stiller has always taken his career very seriously. He got the attention of Lorne Michaels by making a 10-minute parody of The Color of Money, where he capitalized on being, as he dubbed himself, the Jewish Tom Cruise. That led to a gig on Saturday Night Live, but when they wouldn't allow him to make more short films, hey, Stiller was 16 years ahead of Andy Samberg, Stiller left and created The Ben Stiller Show for MTV. It might have only lasted one season, but Stiller did make another version for Fox, also lasting one season. And despite being repeatedly said no to and canceled, Stiller refused to lose momentum and managed to make Reality Bites, where he directed and played a supporting role. That flick did only so-so at the box office, but it turned all the right heads. Stiller got a few more acting gigs and directed The Cable Guy, keeping his career going long enough to land the lead in the super surprise hit There's Something About Mary. Now on every studio's hot list, Stiller didn't direct again until 2001 with Zoolander, and then not again until 2008 with Tropic Thunder. He didn't need to direct as he became one of the biggest comedy stars in Hollywood, thanks to the Meet the Parents and Night at the Museum franchises. But now, Stiller wants an Oscar, and once again, it's up to him. The Bait? A remake of The Secret Life of Walter Mitty, which Samuel Goldwyn Jr. has been trying to get made since 1994. Fascinatingly, the year Reality Bites came out. Goldwyn had originally wanted another comedian to star who had made a splashy debut that year as well with three hits, Jim Carrey, and Ace Ventura, Dumb and Dumber, and The Mask. Over the years, Goldwyn would try to get other Stiller contemporaries like Owen Wilson, Mike Meyer, Sasha Baron Cohen, and even Johnny Depp on board. But eventually, in 2011, Stiller landed the gig, and soon the director's chair as well. The result is a Ben Stiller picture unlike we've ever seen before. Seemingly Mad Men, The Truman Show, and The Royal Tenenbaums all rolled into one. Is this fate something that Ben Stiller has literally been on a collision course with since his film career began? Will he earn his first Oscar nomination and maybe even win? If not, he does have Night at the Museum 3 coming out for Christmas 2014. The Secret Life of Walter Mitty is a very vanilla film, and what I mean by that is that while it's pleasant, it's not powerful. It's not deep enough, and it's not funny enough. Uh, instead, it's kind of like the movie version of those placards you could buy at Hallmark, where they have like a cute inspirational saying on them with a beautiful landscape picture. Uh, that's, this is kind of what that is. Um, and I think that the problem lies in Ben Stiller himself, who I think as a comedian just hasn't evolved to keep up with the current trends in comedy. Today's comedy is fast-paced, edgy, and has a razor-sharp wit to it, none of which are things that can be used to describe the secret life of Walter Mitty. Uh, for instance, today's hot comedians are Louis C.K., uh, Kevin Hart, and also who would have been my choice for this film, Seth MacFarlane. Uh, and the reason I picked him in particular, not only because I think he does a good job of pushing the edge of the en uh, envelope and knowing where comedy is going rather than where it's been, but because there's this fight scene in the film, like a fantasy fight scene between Ben Stiller and Adam Scott, that reminded me so much of the scene in Family Guy uh, where Peter Griffin fights that chicken. And I was just like, that was done better there. And this movie really does rely on non sequiturs because obviously it's the whole Walter Mitty going into having a, a, a dream, a fantasy escape. Uh, and Family Guy just does that on a weekly basis in a, a better fashion and, a, and a more, you know, it's funnier and I think, you know, it's, it's certainly funnier and I think uh, Seth MacFarlane would have the capacity to go a little bit deeper. Uh, so that was, that was my biggest problem with the movie. I mean, it is visually stunning, but I think a, it, it borrows a lot from being able to show great photos from Life magazine, uh, and all of which I think are more compelling than a lot of the shots that Ben Stiller has set up. Um, also, this takes place in modern day, but it had a very vintage feel to it, particularly in the beginning of the movie, which I found distracting. Although not nearly as distracting as some of the crazy product placement in this movie. Uh, I haven't seen crazy, I haven't seen blatant product placement like that in a long time, so I was really surprised to see it here. And it started out kind of endearing as a joke, but then by the time they got to Cinnabon, I was just like, 
tone it down a little bit, guys. I mean, I can't believe you just can't get the money from somewhere else. Um, the thing that impressed me the most about the film was Sean Penn's cameo. He did a great job. I think, you know, he had the he had the deepest, funniest moments in the film. They were really nice. Uh, and Ben Stiller kind of, you know, his character aspires to be like Sean Penn's character, um, but in a watered-down way. And that's how I would describe The Secret Life of Walter Mitty. It's a watered-down version of what could have been a great film. So that's my review of The Secret Life of Walter Mitty. Uh, when you see it, if you've had a chance to see it, be sure to share your own thoughts down below. And I hope you check out these other episodes right now.